All right, we're back with Ann Mowry, 2023 Bay High Distinguished Educator Hall of Fame inductee. So one of the things when we as a committee got to see all the nomination forms and everything that came in was people talked about how dynamic your classes were, right? And we're talking physics and AP physics and math. Dynamic doesn't usually go with those. <laughs> no, not generally. A lot of book work, a lot of equations, a lot of calculations. Exactly. So what is it that made them all talk about your classes being so dynamic? Well, I really believe in, in first of all, teaching the whole student. And that meant basically they had to learn the concepts. And they learned the concepts by doing science. So get them out of the classroom, hitting softballs, measuring time and range, firing air rockets that landed on the roof and then we were out of period until the <laughs> rocket got back down to earth and just doing a lot of hands-on experiments that uh, gave them the confidence that one, uh, they were learning to measure, they were measuring accurately, they were having fun and they, then they were doing something productive with that information. And we did that every day, every week, every month, every year throughout my entire career. And it, it, it was great because I did a lot of things with students that I wish I could have done as a young person. Mm -hmm. In fact, that was part of my interview uh, for the district is I wanted to bring things to the classroom that I wish I would have experienced as a student. Well, you certainly did. And it's reflected in their memories and their respect. Mm -hmm. and their So hitting softballs, were you measuring exit velocity of the year? Or? We, were, we were measuring the range of flight of the ball and the, the hang time of the ball. <laughs> and from that distance in time, you can calculate the horizontal velocity. And then from the horizontal velocity, you can get the vertical components in time based on the acceleration due to gravity. And you can also do, do some of um, other calculations with energy conservation. Okay. Now, I played a lot of softball, and I, I never had to think that much about it. It was bat, hit, ball. No, but that's part of the learning of the equations. I get it. But when I got hit by the softball in the gut once and dropped to my knees, I had all these students corralling around me to see if their teacher was going to live. It was, like, very, very nice that they cared. And then I, I got demoted as pitcher, and then they were pitching. And it was a lot of fun. I mean, I got them outside. I got them inside the hallway. We were doing slinkies. Studying wave motion, we had ripple tanks for water waves. Um, if it was some physical concept, I could bring it alive. That's amazing. So how did you fund all this? Uh, because you, you talk about, you know, because this took a lot of equipment. And we're going to talk about some of the other things you had, the mm -hmm. things that made noise in the other rooms. And <laughs> Where did you get all the money to do all this stuff? Well, first of all, when I came on board in 85, basically the equipment was from the 60s late 60s, 70s, early 80s. And it was showing a lot of wear and tear. Yep. Um, I tolerated a lot of that equipment for quite a long time. Geez, it must have been about my 12th or 13th year of teaching when we went through a lot of curriculum revision. Mm -hmm. uh, we, through that curriculum revision, we, we purchased supplies K through 12 science. It was a huge budget. Uh, we got a lot of durable equipment that should last for, at least in the physics realm, should last for decades. Good, good. But you, you would reach out to companies? You I, would... I did, I did uh, reach out to Pasco Scientific, which is in Roseville, California. And this was with the big curriculum revision in, it must have been 96, 97, 98. It was a two-year implementation. And... I went out there for training. Um, this is where we did electronic data collection. Mm -hmm. So the students could hook up a motion sensor. Um, they could hook up a, try to remember, light sensor, sound sensors, magnetic field sensor, and they could do their labs and see, see real time data on the computer screen. And at first I'm thinking, well, they're not plotting that data by hand anymore like we did for 10, 10 or so years but they could do more experimentation by seeing the data live on, come up on their screen. Amazing. They could do more trials, they could do more runs, they could do variations of the experiment that they, we would not have t had time for under the normal uh, old-fashioned laboratory co uh, conditions like spark timers, for example. Spark timers, you'd run it behind a car and it would leave little, little uh, marks on a piece of paper and the students would measure distance and time and calculate the average speed <laughs> per increment of time. And this, when they'd run out of the room with all these tapes 
on the way home, and it's like was crazy. But now they didn't have to do all that. They had it right on the computer screen. Sure. And print out the graph. All right, we're going to pick up on that okay. here in a second. 